Armored Core 6. I already know this one isn't going to be everyone's cup of tea, but I've had such a blast with this game. I even went back and got all the endings and achievements, which was brutal, and that requires you to get S ranks in all missions. How many of your dogs must I kill before you learn? But I enjoyed this game so much, I made getting the S ranks my mission. It's a very polished mech game, brilliant attention to detail, some RPG elements and customization, slick gameplay, and a good story where I was really surprised how much your decisions changed the direction of the story and missions. Also, some unforgettable epic bosses, easily some of the most high octane moments of my gaming career in 2023. and some not so great bosses. There are a few flaws that I'll get into too. We all make mistakes. So my background with Armored Core, I discovered the series through a PlayStation 1 demo disc, and I've still got my secondhand copy of Armored Core 2 I picked up on the PlayStation 2, and I thought they were pretty great games. I thought it was really cool how you could customize your mech's bottom half to just be a tank or have spider-like legs, and that level of customization is something that translates into Armored Core 6. System engaged. Main system, activating combat mode. I never really played 3 to 5, and they didn't really get great reviews. But since then, From Software have become my favorite modern day game developers, and they've returned to the Armored Core series after an 11 year break. So, hell yes, I was gonna check this out. Okay, little tip before you start, go into the options and crank up the game music, because this game has a banging soundtrack and you'll barely hear it by default. So what is the crack with Armored Core 6? Basically, real quick, on planet Rubicon as a very valuable resource, Coral. Coral! 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 No, not that kind of coral, the coral on planet Rubicon. What? 50 years ago, there was an accident and Coral destroyed everything and left literal fire across the Rubicon system. Hence, fires of Rubicon. Oh, that's why they call it that. Today, new Coral veins have appeared on Rubicon, and this is where you come in. You're Raven, an augmented human and pilot smuggled onto the planet. You must be Raven. And you get to take mercenary jobs from different organizations, and all these different groups have their own agendas. Only a fool would try to outfox Archibus. This translates to being offered different missions from different organizations, and your decisions will decide the direction of the story, missions, and boss fights. I was genuinely really impressed how much these decisions change up the game, and it adds loads of replayability. Some of the decisions you need to make are absolutely brutal. These organization groups are filled with loads of badass armored core pilots, and even though you'll never see anyone's faces, you'll come to love or hate them. I've got your back, buddy. Hope you've got mine. There's some missions where these organizations reluctantly come together to take down the bigger threats, and it is so epic, and there's plenty of banter. Hey, Quickie, trying to grow the channel, any likes or subs would be an amazing help. I really want to get my subscriber count up because that's the key to getting early review copies of games. By the time I get this video out, everyone will have moved on to Starfield. So really want to get early review copies. Thank you. Probably about time I really got into the gameplay. So really slick and really polished. And I think what's most impressive is that everyone is going to have their completely different playstyles and design their own cool armored cores because the customization system is so in depth and fantastic. I mentioned earlier, you can use spider legs to be more airborne. Tank legs allow you to trade maneuverability for more defense and the ability to carry more weight or really agile reversed legs for jumping and dashing about. There are tons of different weapons to purchase and try out, from energy swords, missile launchers, miniguns, lasers, energy shields, and you can bring four weapons into every mission. It's pretty fun experimenting with all your options, basically pew pew, try to stay alive, bring down enemy shields and stagger bars, then go all out. It's really fun playing about and coming up with different loadouts that might excel in different situations. I feel like the game does a pretty good job of allowing you to succeed with your own playstyle. That said, there were only a few times where I felt like I had to swap in parts to beat a certain boss. 
And that is unless you want to tackle the challenge of getting an S rank on all missions. That is where you really need to min-max and design an armoured core to specifically tackle what every mission throws at you. That was brutal. You've got to tackle missions as fast and efficiently as possible without wasting any ammo. But completing this challenge is a testament to how much I enjoyed this game. You shit me. The freelancer really did it. From Software games generally don't have your typical difficulty options. Easy, normal, hard, etc. It's the same with Armored Core 6, just one difficulty everyone plays at. And because of that, we get these tailored epic boss battles that I just completely lost myself in. And there's such a sense of awesomeness and achievement overcoming these larger threats. But this leads into what I think is my biggest flaw with Armored Core 6. Not quite the difficulty, but the difficulty curve itself. Chapter 1 and 2's bosses were pretty brutal and I died loads learning the fights. I loved rising to the challenge but after I found some weapons I liked and a good setup, the rest of the game was mostly a breeze. With a few exceptions, it was way too easy until near the end of the game. But despite that I've still had loads of fun and these have been some of the most challenging and memorable bosses I've fought in 2023. I've seen some criticisms of the visuals and yes, Armored Core 6 is a little bit lower technical fidelity than some other AAA modern releases, but in my opinion it more than makes up for it with its art direction and gameplay. There are gorgeous set pieces and cinematic angles, the scorched skyboxes with the fires of Rubicon are still stunning, and hell, you know what, this is way cheaper than other modern AAA games, not to mention no microtransactions and you don't have to pay an extra £35 to play 5 days early like Starfield, I hate that kind of stuff. There's one other main feature I want to talk about, Arena Mode. Commencing evaluation. Yeah, you can work your way up the ranks and earn some extra cash for battling other armored cores one on one. You can earn some operating system upgrades that also give you a little more customization options with bonuses in your desired traits. It's pretty fun and I really like the attention to detail in the arena. There was one enemy on my card that would cause static interference and the announcer would cut in and out. And there was another fight where the enemy was a hacker and they hacked the arena system to cancel out the announcer and play messages directly to you. The arena nicely complements the story and you'll unlock new arena challenges by continuing into New Game Plus and beyond. And those new challenges tie in with the story, I don't want to spoil anything. I mainly played on PC but I've checked it out on the Steam Deck and it is running great. It worked without having to make any changes, quite easy to get a consistent 30 frames a second and closer to 40 after tweaking a few graphics options. And loading times were decent even from running the game from a memory card. I've loved my time with Armored Core 6, if I had to give it a score, it'd be somewhere around 8.5 and 9 out of 10. Fantastic gameplay, some incredible high octane boss fights, in-depth customization, all round great. And love the soundtrack and the sense of agency with your decisions affecting the story. I wasn't expecting to enjoy the story and characters so much. Thumbs up from me, just a pity about the difficulty curve. If you're a big fan of Zone of the Enders, you might like this. I was getting a lot of similar vibes, taking on fleets of warships comes to mind, and just that really slick combat. If you end up playing, I recommend trying to get all the endings. It's worth it to experience all the unique boss fights and missions that you'll not see in just one playthrough. I want to hear from you guys, have you played Armored Core 6? What do you think of it? Let me know in the comments, I'll try to read and reply to everything. But peace for now.